Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, session, life group session, life group clip yeah. for our series Kingdom Families. And uh, today I have Felicia with me. Hey Felicia. Hi Pastor Jay. <laughs> are you doing? I'm well, how are it's you? Good to, yeah, I'm great. It's good to um, be with you today and yeah. uh, to get into our discussion. So around the message you heard last Sunday, mm. we're going to be talking about world views sure that's a big one hey <laughs> world views what yeah. what is your definition of a world view felicia um i would say that a world view is how you view the world people around you mm -hmm. and the future yes and it basically um controls or rather it um it tells how you should interact with other people yes yes yeah or, or it actually um i, I actually like the word that you use control because <laughs> will our worldview I think gets established at quite a young age. Yes. In fact, um, psychologists and sociologists will tell us that a basic worldview is established mm. uh, before you hit double figures in, in right. age. Yeah. And um, so what happens is the way we see the world, then everything from that point forward gets interpreted through that filter yeah that worldview filter and so yeah. it is actually a controlling Control. factor yes because the way i see people uh is contextualized by my upbringing the Definitely. way i look at spirit spiritual things sure. material things is again it's contextualized by the filters of my worldview which mm. was established at a very young age sure that's and true. i think just on the side that's why parenting is so important so yeah Let's look at what the Bible says about worldview. And although I don't think that word is specifically used in <laughs> scripture, yes. there's, a great, there's so many indications of worldview, the impact of worldviews in the lives of people. Yeah. So read us one of those passages. Okay. Um, it says in Matthew 11, it says, At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever. For and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. Mm. Sure. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right? My Father is, has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father. And no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. All right. So... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus contrasts. He may actually now. If you think, if you read, I mean, how many times have you read sure. that? But now that you read it through this context. The, the context of worldview, it makes so much sense, right? Yeah. He says we see the world in one way. Yes. God sees the world in another way. way. Jesus says, mm, "Do you think you know God? But only the Son knows God, like the Son does, and, yes. and vice versa." And then. Yeah. And then uh, verse 28, it says, then Jesus said, come to me, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Okay, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now Jesus uses a very interesting example of yokes and burdens. So sure. uh, what a lot of people don't understand about Jesus' illustration there of yokes and burdens is that um, in the time mm. of Jesus, well, he was considered a rabbi. Yes, yes. And in the time... A rabbi's teaching, mm. and all the rabbis had a very specific teaching. Sure. They all taught the same from the same Torah, and, but they all had their one specific, their sort of pet teaching. Wow, yes. And, and you would go sit at the feet of a rabbi. rabbi whose teaching really intrigues you. Sure. And that specific teaching was known as a yoke. Wow. And so when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, He's saying, take my teaching, my worldview. Wow. Because my worldview is, is easy. light. It's light. And easy. Sure. Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Um, so it was a teaching. So this is what Jesus is saying. Yeah. God's value system, because that's really what a worldview comes down to. Yes. It's a value system. Mm. 
God's value system mm. um, sometimes clashes with the value systems we've created for ourselves. And even after we become Christians, after we get saved, yeah. there's still that tension between the value systems of the kingdom mm. and the value systems that guided us as we grew Perhaps. up in a, in a specific cultural context mm. or whatever that is. And, yeah. uh, and, and a good example of that is apartheid. Sure. Okay. Are we going to go there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I can talk about that, right? Yes, yes. Uh, because of my cultural background. And yes. it's very interesting that the apartheid system, which is now we all agree mm. uh, was and still is an evil system, yeah. was actually laid on a biblical foundation. Yeah. How did that happen? Because a certain human cultural historical worldview was superimposed on what scripture said and sure. then you get a monster yes. you don't get the truth anymore you get a monster and that's mm. that's how worldviews can can clash can and clash. create that kind of tension yeah yeah that's such a good that's such a good example actually <laughs> um and then Pastor Jay, I just want to go back to the whole rabbi and disciple yes, 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 culture. Yes. How does that work? Because obviously rabbi means teacher, yeah. but the relationship between a disciple and a rabbi. Mm. Could you please? Now, now this again is, <laughs> is very interesting because even in the rabbinical systems, yes. there was a specific worldview that was a very gender orientated. Oh. So first of all, uh, in Jesus' time, rabbis or teachers could only be men. Okay. And only men, or specifically boys, could sit at the feet of rabbis. Oh, so when you sat at the feet of a rabbi, sure. and we're going to get into a place where Jesus completely shakes up that culture, right? Yeah. When you sit at a rabbi's feet, only the students to a rabbi could sit at a rabbi's feet. It was a place of honor. Oh, wow. Okay. Very few 12, 13 year olds could, um, could say that they sat at the feet of a rabbi. Mm. Rabbis chose them very carefully. Okay. But it was only boys okay. who eventually became men, and some of them became rabbis in their own right, and some okay. of them didn't, mm. didn't. But it was a very male orientated worldview mm -hmm. within the rabbinical system. Sure. Okay. And so um, now Jesus comes. <laughs> and he turns that whole thing upside down. He turns and it there's around. This, there's this moment that he has with Mary and Martha. Quickly, quickly read us, or, or let, me, let me read it. This is from okay. Luke chapter 10. Mm. And it says, she, that's Martha, mm. came to Jesus and said, uh, remember this is when Jesus goes for a meal with Mary and Martha, who's, yes. who's, who stays in the same house, right? Yes. So <coughs> uh, Jesus sits down. Mm -hmm. Mary comes to sit at his feet. Martha, Martha is busy prepare. cooking because... And her, she's doing what was traditionally correct for her worldview at the time. Yes. She needs to be in the kitchen. She needs to be cooking, right? Yeah. Jesus is a, is a rabbi. Yeah. Okay, look at what happens. She, Martha, came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Where, where was she <laughs> sitting? At Jesus' feet. It wasn't just that she wasn't doing the work. She was sitting at the feet of a rabbi. Oh, my sure. word. Sure. Can you imagine if what? somebody saw that, right? Okay, and then he says, tell her to come and help me. I, th I think uh, her heart was like, this is embarrassing. It's not just the work that needs to get done, but there's a woman sitting at your feet. Yes, right? she's embarrassing the family. Yes. She's, embarrassing. <laughs> she's embarrassing, she's counterculture. This is not going to end well. Yeah. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. That's what a worldview does. Yes. It, it defines the details of the way we think. Yeah. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken from her. So sure. the question that Jesus <laughs> asks is, so who does the cooking, and who changes the light bulbs, and who sure. said that it should be that way? Sure. Who did say? <laughs> <laughs> so in this way, Jesus... Very upside down, very counterculturally, mm -hmm. he begins to affirm women wow. very, very strongly. Yeah. Yeah. So there are many other 
worldviews. And um, Pastor Jay, you know, I am um, Zulu. Yes. So uh, growing up, I grew up in a Zulu household. Mm -hmm. And there are different worldviews in yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, there's a lot of different elements to being Zulu. There's yeah. a lot of different, there's a, a way that I must approach adults. There's a way I must approach uh, someone of the opposite gender you know there's a way that i must do things yes. and, and and when you want to get married one day oh man oh man <laughs> then there must be a lobola negotiation that happens uh -huh. um and there's other elements too yeah. but what's what's very interesting for me that i i've realized is that there are certain elements in a traditional um zulu marriage wedding yes. preparation thing that yeah. is okay because mm. Lobola, for example, connects two families. Mm. That's mm. the whole point of a Lobola. Mm -hmm. It's not a really about the cash. It's yes. about two families becoming one yes. because of the union of their children. And, and just the, the process of that happening. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that unites families. Mm. But there are other elements that cause a lot of friction mm. because they involve ancestors and then mm. it involves a lot of other elements that as someone who believes in in Jesus being the mm. only way mm. <laughs> that I would look and be like, yes. whoa, yes. not that. Yes. I don't want to go into that. And that creates tension in our spiritual walk, and especially when yeah. we walk together as brothers and sisters in a multicultural, diverse community. For sure. Where consciously or subconsciously, we all believe what the Bible says, but yes. knowingly or without knowing it, hmm. We have a tendency to bring our cultural, historical worldviews yes. and say, can we just mix it in there? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just, you know. Is it, I mean, I mean uh, what's, what's so what's wrong with harm? it, right? And mm. I think that is where discernment needs to come in because yes. we cannot add or take away from the Word of God as it is. Yes. And that is a process. It's not, I, Felicia, I wish it was as simple as just saying, that's what the Bible says, let's just do it that way. But it's not that simple, right? <laughs> not at all. We have to consider one another. We have yeah. to get into conversation. We have to uh, look for the guidance of the Spirit to give us yes. wisdom. But at the end of the day, we all need to agree on one thing. Mm. That the truth of God's Word needs to remain the truth of God's Word. That's right. The pure truth of God's Word. That's so true. And how we work that out. So, yeah. interesting. You and I don't have answers to all these things and that's really not don't. our purpose i yes. think we're just gonna <laughs> we we just have to start a conversation all right yes. so in the light of what we've talked about and and sunday's message yeah why don't you consider uh, a few questions for your life group discussion straight after this so here's the first one what has shaped your worldview growing up sure um You've shared a little bit of that, yes. but why don't you guys have a discussion and just talk about what some of the worldviews are that shaped your life and still perhaps does do, yeah. ev uh, do even as a as a as a believer as a believer, yeah. yeah. And then the second question I'm going to go to is what seemed normal to normal to you that other people seemed to do differently. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how much of a shock level was that for you? Culture yes, shock, right? Culture shock, That's yes. where culture shock comes <laughs> in, okay? And then uh, question number three, what unspoken roles have you seen in marriage and family? Ooh. And, and that's, that's why marriage counseling is so important. That's because true. Because two people come together, yes. they both have these presuppositions relating to their worldviews, their upbringing. Yeah. And you need to talk about that. Yeah. You can't, that, that cannot become a surprise the yeah. minute you step into your marriage. Yeah, or unspoken expectations. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and the rest of the question is, and do you want these to continue in the future? Sure. Yes, yeah. because you can, you can look at your parents' marriage, for example, or your families, and then decide, ah, oh, no, yeah. in this marriage, we're going to do things differently. Yes. Yeah. And that's okay. And that dynamic happens in church too, isn't it? True. Friendship circles, yeah. and lots of, lots of, uh, yeah. And then the final question there, Felicia. It says, what values in society or culture have you encountered which clash with values in the Bible? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now, this, is, this, this, this question <laughs> is important to understand. Yeah. The question is not what values in society and culture 
have you encountered which clashes with your values? Ooh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yes. It's what clashes with the values in the in Bible. The Bible. It's not, so the question is not, what do other people do that upset me? Yes. No, it's what have you seen people do? What have you found yourself doing mm -hmm. that is contrary to the values of yes, Scripture? Yes, yes. And Pastor Jay, with that, like uh, when Jesus said there that my yoke is easy and yes, light. yes. Yes. When things are heavy for us, yes, that's when we need to question them. That we have to needs look at to them. be an indication there's a problem. Yes. And especially when a yoke mm. um, benefits one group of people and not the that other, becomes a burden for another yes. in the same family or mm. church, then there's a problem. That's right. There's a worldview problem. Yeah. And we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So. Indeed. Interesting questions. Yeah. I think you're going to have a great discussion today. So go for it and may God bless you. And we will see you again soon. Cool. Bye.